Tyrese Halliburton of the Sacramento Kings recently went down with a very concerning looking leg injury. And this was a really bad looking one because on the actual play, we saw that it looked like his leg was actually bending the opposite way. Now on the actual play that Halliburton was injured on, he was dribbling the ball up the floor and we saw him sort of reach out in front of him. And as he did this, that left leg planted and his knee actually went into a position known as hyperextension. This was a very worrisome injury right off the bat because as soon as this happened, we noticed that he was in a lot of pain and of course he was limping. He ultimately would would not return to the game. Fortunately, recently we did get a piece of good news when we found out that he did in fact have an MRI and the results of that MRI showed that he does not have any damage to any of his ligaments in that left knee. The position of knee hyperextension though can be a very, very risky position for the knee. And since some people may not be too familiar with the position of hyperextension and why this is a very risky position, I'm gonna go ahead and focus on that in today's video. Welcome basketball fans. For those of you that aren't familiar with me, my name is Nick Gallo and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. With this video, I'm going to take a very close look at Tyrese Halliburton's most recent injury against the Dallas Mavericks. First, I'm going to start the video off by showing the actual play that Halliburton was injured on so that we get a good visualization for his mechanism of injury. Then I'll go over what exactly the position of knee hyperextension is and why this is so risky. And finally, I'll go over what we should expect to see moving forward from a person that has suffered a knee hyperextension. If you like today's video and you find it informative, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future regarding sports injuries, rehabilitation, and other physical therapy related content. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comment section below. Now to begin, let's go ahead and take a look at the play that Halliburton was injured on. We see here as Halliburton is dribbling up the floor, he tries to do behind the back, and then he grabs on that knee and goes to the floor in a lot of pain. In the slow motion replay, we see that as he goes right here, he plants awkwardly and that left knee goes into hyperextension. So here I have a model of the knee joint, and so the knee joint is going to be formed by that big bone known as the femur that we often associate with the thigh coming down. Then we have two bones in the lower leg, and they are of course the tibia and the fibula. Now, there are four ligaments that are located within that knee joint that contribute to overall knee stability when they are intact, and they are of course the anterior cruciate ligament, or the ACL for short, which is located in through here. Then we have the MCL or the medial collateral ligament. This is located medially or towards the inside of the knee. Then moving laterally or towards the outside of the knee, we have a ligament known as the lateral collateral ligament. And finally in the back here, we have another ligament known as the posterior cruciate ligament or the PCL for short. There are also two other really important structures and they are the medial and the lateral meniscus. These two pieces of fibrocartilage you can think of as shock absorbers. Without these, you're going to have bone on bone action between the femur and the tibia and that's going to cause a lot of discomfort. So you can think of both of these menisci as shock absorbers between the two bones. Now I'll go over two of the most important movements that are located at the knee joint. The first one of course is flexion and this is when a person is going to be bending the knee. And there is a normal value for flexion, but because of the size of people's thighs and their lower legs, this can often be restricted due to muscle mass and things of that sort. So typically the normal value for flexion is going to be anywhere between 120 to about 140 degrees, but this can vary based on the person. Then when a person is straightening that lower leg, this is where a person is going into a position known as extension. Now, the clinical observation that we see with extension is that oftentimes people have more extension than normal. The textbook value is of course zero degrees to form that straight line, but oftentimes in clinical practice, and I've seen this personally, people will have a little bit of hyperextension located within that knee joint. So commonly we see a little bit of hyperextension. Now, in the case of Tyrese Halliburton, we saw that as he was planting with that left leg, we saw what looked like his leg go into a lot of extreme hyperextension. Now, this is a very risky position because yes, it's going well beyond that zero degrees, which we have as our textbook norm for extension, but as a person goes into hyperextension, you can really see here that it's going to tighten and it's really going to strain all of the ligaments located within the knee 
including the ACL, including the PCL, the MCL, the LCL. So this is actually a very risky position. And of course, when a person is putting their body weight through the knee joint when in this position, this is very, very risky. And a person is at risk for damaging all of those structures. They can also damage the menisci, the medial or the lateral meniscus because of the force that's going through that knee joint in that position. Now, fortunately in Halliburton's case, he has in fact had that MRI and they have revealed that there is no ligament damage, but once again, you have other things that are located in the knee that are not just ligaments. Two of those are of course are the menisci. I think if he did have a meniscus tear, they might've specified it by now, but if there is anything else involved, then we're just going to have to wait and see if that is released to the public. Also something else that we will see in cases of extreme hyperextension, sometimes if a person goes into too much of that hyperextension, we can see a bone bruise form between B femur and the tibia, and that's because the bones are actually going to make that bone on bone contact. Once again, this also has not been released to us. So if he is in fact dealing with anything else, such as a bone bruise or anything else like that, we're just gonna to have to wait and see if this in fact is revealed to us. Now, because Halliburton did not have any ligament damage, as of right now, sources are saying that surgery is not indicated. This of course makes sense because if for example, the ACL is injured. Typically what people will do after that, if they are suffering a full rupture, they of course will have that ACL reconstruction. So I think as of right now, the fact they're reporting that he will not require surgery, this makes absolute sense because none of the ligaments are injured. Typically, if we see somebody that will come in with a pure knee hyperextension injury and when they do not have any damage to any ligaments, what we'll do within that first seven to 10 days when they are in that, what is known as the inflammatory phase, we're gonna do this acronym known as RICE, where R stands for rest, I stands for ice, C stands for compression, and E stands for elevation because obviously the person is going to have a lot of pain and swelling localized within that knee joint itself. Then, as of course, they get out of that inflammatory phase and things start to feel better, we'll start to add in some light range of motion exercises because we wanna make sure the person has normal range of motion in that joint like they did before. So we will try to achieve that normal 120 to about 140 degrees of flexion, depending on the normal value of that person. And we want to restore the norm value for extension because after a person goes into hyperextension, they might be a little afraid to fully extend the knee joint again. Then as the person is doing good and we've restored normal range of motion, we're going to really work on strengthening specifically to that quadricep muscle. Now, the quadricep muscle is very important, and this is the muscle, of course, that is located on the anterior or front portion of the thigh. It's important that a person has really good quad control because if a person's quad is not firing properly, then they can absolutely go into more knee hyperextension. So you wanna make sure that quad muscle really is firing properly, that it has adequate control of the knee, we're also going to restore a lot of glute strengthening as well because that will help keep that knee in a very good neutral position as a person is going to do cuts and things like that. So as of right now, I expect them to be very conservative with Halliburton, but of course, as he moves on, they're gonna do things such as strengthen the hips to make sure that the knee is in proper alignment and really focus on that quad control to try to prevent this from happening in the future. As of right now, sources are saying that Halliburton is projected to miss the remainder of the season. I think this is probably the right call given the fact that they do have a very slim chance of the Kings actually making the playoffs this year. And of course, they probably just wanna be very conservative with his injury because he is a rookie and they don't wanna have him push through it and suffer any type of permanent damage. So I think as of right now, that's a very good call by the Sacramento Kings, but of course things can change. And if there are any updates regarding Halliburton's case and they expect him to return this season, I'll be sure to update everybody in the comment section. Also, if you happen to hear anything, please also feel free to update everybody. And that's it as of right now regarding Tyrese Halliburton's most recent injury against the Dallas Mavericks. Once again, if you like today's content, please subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.